Wow. It's a rainy morning. Well, thank you all for being here today. Uh, before we set the ball rolling, I'll call on Mr. Joseph Kwashi to give us the opening prayer. Shall we pray? God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for giving us knowledge and your traveling message to meet here this morning. We pray, O oh God, that you take absolute control of our today's activities. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you very much. Mr. Kashi, you can sign it time. We'll now take um, welcome address from the National Cyber Security Advisor. A very good morning to all of you and welcome uh, to this particular session on child online protection focusing on parents and guardians. Uh, we are privileged to have parents and guardians joining us for this conversation because you are an important stakeholder. Uh, the Ministry of Communications has identified child online protection as one of the important pillars of our national cybersecurity development. The reasons are obvious. Ghana is a country with a booming population of the youth. Uh, would uh, estimate about 70% of our um, school going uh, children. You know, children in school, about 70% of them use the internet. Uh, it is estimated that on a daily basis, we have 19% of our population using the internet. And uh, these are important figures we need to take into consideration. But there are also experiences that are not really, you know, uh, the best for us uh, with respect to the negative aspects of the use of the internet. We are pretty much aware that uh, some of our young children and uh, even adults have had their images, videos taken and shared on social media. I mean, these are, we're talking of intimate images. The National Cyber Security Center receive reports on a weekly basis of certain illegal contents that are being circulated on the internet. That creates a serious problem for us. On one hand, we are enjoying the benefit of digitalization. We are using the internet for learning, for socialization, and for research, for example. However, there are also risks that we expose ourselves with respect to the content that we, you know, the children, consume on the internet, uh, with respect to the contact that they make on the internet, and sometimes their very uh, conduct themselves. It put them in danger, and it also exposes other children uh, to harm. Now there's a big question, parenting in a digital age, especially if you are a mother and you do not have the ICT skills. How do you actually parent your child who uses electronic gadget? I think most of you will admit that you know, your children at home are pretty much active with respect to the use of devices compared to even with the adults. Now the question is, they may know more about the devices they hold in their hands more than yourself. How do you ensure that they use these devices for uh, the purpose by which those devices were given out? And, and I think that is one of the main reasons we had to put up this particular conversation to ensure that we bring expert industry stakeholders to, to join you, the parents, so that we can hear from both sides of the story. You know, uh, what are the concerns of, uh, concerns of parents with respect to ensuring that their children follow certain internet safety and best practices uh, at home, we're talking of guardians, we're talking of teachers. How do we parent the children to ensure that they use 
the internet in a positive way. I think uh, the conversation started uh, three years ago with UNICEF, and we have taken this conversation across different parts of the country. But it's the first time we brought parents together, both physically and virtually, uh, to ensure that we deepen the conversation and we address some of the gaps. I must say, last year, more than 40 school children uh, were engaged on this particular matter, and that has increased awareness, leading to some reporting and, and arrests of a suspect, which is currently also uh, being handled by the law enforcement. We believe that uh, we need to continue this kind of conversation, especially when we bring industry players, uh, expert, but also parents and guardians themselves to, to interact and share best practices. Even for those who do not have the skills to use the computer and guide their uh, children, I believe there are always you know, neighbors, good neighbors, uh, family, friends who can then support the, the child's uh, transformation with respect to the use of computers. I believe we have huge challenges and I want to also encourage parents not only to address the issue from the technological angle. I think the social dimension in terms of the trust that we need to build in our own homes will also contribute to how uh, well will our children you know, have faith in us in terms of sharing some of their negative experiences whilst using the internet. It is challenging, the government is an enabler and that is why we put this program together and that is why uh, awareness creation in this area goes on every day. That is why UNICEF has come on board to, to assist the process. It is difficult, but I believe we can. I want to encourage all of you to get on board and, and let's consider the protection of Ghanaian child as an uh, ultimate priority. We've brought in a number of experts and stakeholders uh, who will be joining the conversation as we move on. Um, it is a beautiful moment for us to interact, I must say. It's going to be exciting because I know the caliber of experts who are going to uh, move the process forward. And I want to encourage all of you to enjoy the session, contribute, and we will be happy to take the feedback to incorporate into our intervention in this particular space. Once again, I want to thank you for coming and have fun. We are privileged today to have in our midst some uh, distinguished personalities. I will introduce them as we go on, but I will acknowledge some before we start with the remarks. We have in our midst um, ACP, Dr. Gustav Herbert Youngson. He's from the Criminal Investigations Department. <laughs> we have Mrs. Florence Corte, Acting Director, Department of Children. We, are, we also have with us Madam Ivy from the Guidance and Counseling Department. She's the director at Ghana Education Service. <laughs> then we have Mrs. Joyce Odame from UNICEF. <laughs> Madam Hilda Mensa also from UNICEF. So as we go on, I'll be acknowledging our major stakeholders in here, but I also take this opportunity on the note of the welcome address from the CSA to also welcome everyone here. Thank you for making it under these circumstances. It's quite, uh, it's raining quite heavily out there and we are grateful that you've been able to make it here, thank you. We'll call on a representative from UNICEF to give us remarks. UNICEF has been a very faithful partner throughout all this. And we'll call on Madam Hilda Mensa to give us remarks from UNICEF.
So good morning to all of you. And a very warm welcome to today's session of the Cyber Security and Awareness Creation Month. I'm particularly excited today because I'm a parent myself. And all of you are parents as well. And so I'm particularly excited. As Dr. Ntibu Siakul rightly said, parents are the most important stakeholder when it comes to children's digital life. Because we are first and foremost the primary gatekeepers. We make a lot of huge influence on our children. And children also tend to listen to their parents when we build the trust. They tend to listen to their parents they influence, our parents influence the way children behave, the way they conduct themselves, what they do, the school they attend. And now, even on the digital platform, we also do have a huge responsibility to influence what they do on the platform. At the initial point, everyone is excited to provide for our children a digital device to enable them to learn. And COVID-19 even made that more compelling, that all of us were resorting to the use of internet to do one thing or the, or the other. But for children, the primary reason is for them to be able to learn, to connect with their school. Some of them were having lectures online. And so it becomes more compelling for us to make provision for them to be able to do these things. And so what that means is that while we have the responsibility to provide these things, we also do have the responsibility to even supervise. So most of our homes, let me take it literally, we, we do keep TVs in our room, in our bedroom, and leave another TV in the hall so that you can resort to the bedroom to watch the TV and do your own private thing while giving the children the space to also watch their own kind of program. The younger ones would go for cartoons. I don't know what the teens will go for, but I'm sure there are interesting programs that also. And of course, some also would even be watching the telenovelas that most of the TV stations are showing now. But somehow, it, we find the space to give them the space to do what they want to do and enjoy it. But when it comes to the internet, the, it's a game changer. Because you cannot just resort to your bedroom and leave them online. Some level of guidance is required. And the primary givers of those guidelines are you, the parents, or is us, the parents. The question then begins, how do we do it? Not all of us are tech savvy, certainly not. And not all of us are even literate. And for even the ones that are most literate and most sophisticated, you will find that those are the ones who even buy the most sophisticated digital devices for their children. And so while I'm literate, I may not be that tech savvy. And so quite a number of parents interesting buy phones, new phones, and give it to their children to even help them do a setup or download an app. And so then already there's a source of worry because I am the bearer of the phone, but I don't even know how to find my way around it. And I have to rely on my daughter or my son who is in JSS to be able to help me navigate through the phone. And what it means is that then they are going to be navigating a lot more of things that you are clueless about. And so that's the starting point for us to begin to learn as parents. And so could we start by saying that when you have a mobile phone, you begin to explore. Or even when you ask the child to even download the app or whatever you want the child to do, the child begins to take you through it. But more serious is for us to be able to supervise them. Now, COVID is not going to go away, apparently, for a very long time, but we don't know when. So what it means is that our life online, our virtual life will be spanning over a certain period of time. That demands that all of us become internet savvy, at minimum, or tech savvy, just so that we can able to provide the necessary guidance that our children will need to be able to stay safe online. And we need to also begin to have conversations with them about safety online and risk online, and particularly what they can do to avert the risk. It's, it's very important. 
And so in doing so, then the supervision becomes very key. But we should also get to know our, our children. While they are learning, the internet is also influencing their play and their social development. You cannot leave the ability of your children to develop responsibly into their own hands. It is our responsibility to guide them to develop well. Just as we'll guide them physically when we see that they are growing and maturing and becoming adults and connecting with new friends, we also have that virtual responsibility to ensure that their social development is key. And so let's get curious about who they're interacting with online, who they are friends, what kind of sites are they visiting? But the biggest problem, and maybe probably we UNICEF and the National Center for um, uh, the Cybersecurity Center would have to look at how we can begin to engage parents who are not as literate as some of us are privileged to be, just so that they can also provide some kind of guidance to their children. Because when we sit here and we have these kinds of conversations, sometimes the temptation is to think that everybody is like us, but they are not. And so what kind of content can we begin to develop for the parents who are not so much internet? But then they also begin to understand the risks that the internet poses to our children and provide the minimum guidance and supervision that they can to their children. That way, collectively, individually, collectively, we will be able to steer a path that will help our children mold a healthier internet life. And all of us will feel okay knowing that our children are, have been, are behaving responsibly on the internet. I particularly welcome you to today's section. Take keen interest in it, participate, give us information so that we can move on and ensure that we are protecting our children well. So you're welcome once again. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Hilda. And the key word here is supervision when it comes to uh, parents in this aspect of child protection. On this note, I'll call on Mrs. Florence Isikote, Acting Director, Department of Children to give remarks on behalf of the Ministry for Gender, Children, and Social Protection. Hello, good morning. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. And on behalf of the minister, the deputy minister, the entire management of the ministry. I bring you warm greetings, and um, the minister asked me to just say a few words on her behalf. Even though the words are not scripted, I just wanted to start with um, a poster I saw somewhere once. The poster is about a family that says that somebody came in and stole their computer. The computer is old, very old, but they will give the person a thousand dollars if only the person allows them a link for them to download the information on the computer. The person can keep the computer because they have the life of the family all on that computer. The pictures, the letters, everything that they do, their receipts, all fall in there. So basically, you have a life that is on the computer stolen by somebody. This is what we are trying to prevent today. That life that we live out there in the cyberspace is real. It's not something that hangs in the air, but it's something that is part of, an extension of us. So there's a need for us to ensure that whatever we put on that computer, when somebody opens it, will not put us in danger. Can you imagine if there are family secrets on this computer? Naked pictures of husband and wife on this computer. Can we imagine what will happen? So cyber hygiene or keeping a clean mind and a clean posting habit 
is something that must be part of our life. We can't have a different, a secret life and have another one somewhere because we extend the person we are onto the cyberspace. And it's for this reason that we are happy as a ministry to be part of this program that is going to discuss how we all can contribute. Sometimes we seem to think that it's um, something out there. But I always say that if you will not go telling everybody that you meet, you haven't met the person before, then you start, hey, did you know I ate Banku this afternoon? And, and then I went to the beach this afternoon. And then I, I went to uh, visit my auntie last week. Would that person think you are not crazy? But we do this all the time in the cyberspace. We make friends with people we don't know and tell them secret things about ourselves that they don't have the right to know. Just want us to draw attention to this fact that we are who we are, whether we are outside there or on the internet. And we need to be very careful and we need to be very conscious that children need to know that this world is just an extension. And whatever you put there, it says it doesn't forget. Because now, we know that if you're going to look for a job, there's always an internet search about you. Whatever you did and said about somebody, about how ugly they are, about how uh, disrespectful they were to you, everything you say can be brought back and used against you. So therefore, be careful as children and parents, let our children know that cyber hygiene is part of our life throughout. It's not one time. We need to always work on it. And we need to build our capacity as parents to ensure that we do not stay behind. Because what is happening on the internet doesn't stay the same. It keeps on changing. Even your phone, you bought it yesterday. Within one month, they will tell you that software updating. It always means that something new is happening. And you have to open your eyes and see why are they updating it? And if you don't want the update, don't accept it. Because sometimes some of these updates give them more power to assess your intimate details on the phone. You say yes, and then off they go. Nothing you can say can be used against them. So we need to ensure that as parents and teachers, we are building our capacity so that we can help our children stay safe on the internet. So ending here, I just would like to say thank you for coming, and we are hoping the discussions will add up to your repertoire of skills that you need to help our children, and our children too can learn from us and can learn from you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam Florence. If you want to know the true meaning of uh, multitasking. Just observe the women who mount this podium. I work with them closely. And these are people who send you a message after working hours and ask if you can talk. And they know you are not sleeping, but it's just the way. They, their commitment to child protection and child online protection from these women is worth emulating. Thank you very much, Madam Florence. We're supposed to be on the program, we're supposed to be having a message from a Ministry of Education, but they are yet to come in. So we'll move to one of our major stakeholders. That's the PTA, Parent Teacher Association. Yesterday, we were here with the children and young people, and you'll be amazed at some of the things. One thing that stuck with me was parents should seize their phones sometimes. So, call on Mr. Isaac Ajetesowa, sorry, Charles Ajetesowa, to give us remarks from the PTA. Good morning, everybody. I thank you for this opportunity that parents should also share their thoughts 
on how child online can be protected. But before I make the remark, I want us to provoke our thoughts a bit. Because when we talk of parents, like the first and second speakers spoke about, we have some who are privileged to have had higher education, others are down there. So imagine, and this is a thought-provoking question I'm going to place before all of us. Imagine a 15-year-old child whose mother is illiterate and the father is not around. And the uncle overseas has brought him either a tablet or a smartphone. And we know that these children, when they are given money, they also save. So he goes out there with a chip in it and always, you know, browsing and then surfing on. The mother comes around very ignorant and innocent about what the child is doing. But the child somehow will be fidgeting. What do you think will happen to that child? I make this remark in behalf of the national president, Mr. Alexander Yadanso, on behalf of the council, that is the National Council of Parent Teacher Associations, NCPTs. There is no doubt that the digital revolution, though intricate, has become an essential part of human life globally in modern times. In fact, the COVID-19 pandemic has made online or virtual learning even more imperative due to the closure of schools. The importance of the digital age cannot be overemphasized as it, it permeates all spheres of human endeavor, be it education, research, science and technology, you name it. Today, such human activities largely depend on the digital revolution, internet, for easy, speedy, and efficient production to serve the world. Recognition of the immense benefit society derives from its usage and the crave for its safe use, given the threats of cyberbullying and other crimes alluded to, above makes the National Cyber Security Awareness Month 2020 even more relevant, especially when, according to UNICEF, cyber citizens' demographics show that a third of internet or online users are children. It is in recognition of this that the government of Ghana, through the Ministry of Communications, is partnering UNICEF, the Council of European Union, the US Embassy, and the rest who were at the launching um, to sensitize the publics on a safer digital Ghana. As the nation observes the National um, Cyber Security Awareness Month, there is everything salient in addressing one of the fulcrum around which cyber citizens in general and child online protection per se can be effectively ensured. Indeed, parents and guardians have a crucial role to play in eradicating cybercrime, such as cyber stalking, cyberbullying, sextortion, and obscene exposures against our children's innocence. However, the plain truth is that in Ghana, many of our parents and guardians lack the technical capacity and competence to guide the children and youth. Hence, this year's Awareness Month campaign is very, very important. For parents and guardians to play their roles effectively with respect to ensuring cyber hygiene, best practices in our homes and immediate environments, they need to be well informed and equipped. 
bridging knowledge and awareness gap. How do we do that? Understanding cyber crime and cyber security by parents is key. As such, it must be thorough, must be accurate and routine. So what we are saying is that parents, as we are being made aware this month, and I hope that we'll plead with the Ministry of Communications, so that just as the COVID-19 was actually approached in terms of television, you know, the other restriction, the measures were put on TV for everybody to know. This one too can also take or assume that line of what awareness creation. There are several steps for a good cyber hygiene. Now, cyber hygiene itself is about training yourself to think proactively about your cyber security, as you do with your personal hygiene. It's the same. However, you can take the following. The experts will actually give us more, but we just want to mention a few so that we we'll guide ourselves and be able to monitor our children at home. And some of the steps are to install reputable antivirus and malware software, two, to use network firewalls, and also update software regularly. Set strong passwords. Use multi-factor authentication. Employ device encryption. Backup regularly. Keep your hard drive clean and secure your router. Improved cyber security culture and practices among parents will include the following. Managing where they are serving, where their children are serving. How do we manage that? We can do something. Number one, we said we have to be managing where the children will be surfing. Then the internet service providers also offer such free uh, parental control features as the ability to get web activity reports that shows you all the websites your children visit or attempt to visit. Also, you can check out the site your kids have visited and block specific sites or types of sites you do not want them to visit. Three, create unique profiles for different family members with individualized online usage limits. This can be useful if you have children of different ages. Four, block access to certain web tools such as instant messaging, gaming, chat rooms, and message boards, allowing parents to keep better track of what their children are saying and to whom. Five, remotely manage your account with the ability to change parental control settings from any computer with web access, whether in or outside the home and view your children's online activities as they happen with real-time web tracking features. Allow web, young web users to request for permission to visit an authorized website for an adult to approve. Receive, that's number eight, receive a tamper control alert if someone other than you tries to change the control settings. Set up timer that limits the amount of time users can spend online. For us as parents, we need to somehow and some, sometimes be a bit flexible with our children. 
So how do we do this? So constant education. We need to educate them constantly. Another thing that we can do is to what? Install security apps for easy monitoring of our children's time spent online. Every parent ought to be concerned about the time that your child spend online and be, be, begin to what, question. Three, monitoring children's online activities. Although some parents may not like to the idea of spying on their children, I don't call it spying, but somehow, <laughs> we need to check their browsing history so that we know exactly what they do when they go on online. Number five, we need to be aware of cyberbullying. Our innocent children may not be aware of what cyber bullies are, and uh, innocently, whilst they are unaware, they cash in and do all sorts of things. By the time you realize the children are meeting them somewhere you yourself may not be aware of. Seven. And number six, we need to limit their time. Their time. Limit their time. We need to have devices out in plain sight. Sometimes, if the device is in your bedroom or in the children's bedroom, they'll go and hide there. You may not always be frequenting there, and they may be doing certain things that may harm them. Even though to them it is pleasurable, in the end, will uh, harm them. Hide your personal passwords and build trust. Very key. Build trust with your children. Let your children know the reason why you are monitoring them. You are actually offering some sort of advice to them as to why they shouldn't do A or Z. In conclusion, we're saying that it is crucial that parents and guardians will endeavor themselves or endear themselves to making child online protection a priority. And as a result, bridge the knowledge and awareness gap in order to be in position to manage children online activities. In this direction, access management is critical as it takes two broad forms, parental control softwares and antivirus programs. Keep best practices, uh, keep best cyber hygiene practices and make your children safe online. I thank you very much for hearing us. Thank you, Mr. Charles Ajete Suwa. And just as he said, once you compromise your personal hygiene, there's no way you should compromise cyber hygiene. And with the points he gave, Mr. Ajete Suwa, some of the children will tell you we can clear our history when you interact with them. So the fundamental thing is you need to know your child because some of them are smarter than you think. But once you build that trust in a relationship with them, you know what you do. Some will even tell you, well, my mother or father knows my account, password, but I have another account that they don't know about it. Some use names that you can never even trace to them. So you just need to know your child and build that trust with them. Thank you very much. To put our conversation, there'll be a panel, a panel discussion, and to put that into perspective, we're going to have a presentation to further enlighten us, because there's a lot of information going around with respect to cyber hygienic practices, and because of the nature of the cyberspace, things change 
by the second. And we always need to update our knowledge. Once we are working with devices, once we are using the internet, and especially in this era of COVID, that the only thing I can say we can do is probably bath and eat online. We virtually do everything on there. So we'll call on Mrs. Joyce Odame, the Child Protection Officer with UNICEF, to take us through what the reality is. Good morning, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here this morning and to share some thoughts with you. Um, I want to acknowledge the earlier speakers. Indeed, they've done most of the things um, I was going to do here. They've said a lot of them. So this session is just to put our conversation in context. And I must say that I am doing this presentation not because I'm an expert when it comes to technology. I may not understand how it works, but there, is a few, there are a few things for sure. I am a parent. I also use technology. And I am aware of the numerous advantages or uses or benefits of technology. I'm equally aware of the risks that it poses to our children and the challenges that we have to confront with when it comes to parenting children in this age. So this morning, it is a conversation we have started. And I'm just going to continue from where um, the earlier speakers left off. Most of the points, even though have been said, it is just for emphasis and to set the stage for the next uh, main section of the program where you have the opportunity to delve into details and share thoughts and ideas on how we can effectively parent our children in times like these. So um, the outline, you are going to look at the objectives of the section, the context, the risks, and some of the strategies. And the last speaker outlined a number of them. So we'll go through some of them, and then um, I'll bring my presentation to a close. So the objective of the section is to provide an overview of what children and young people do online. Globally, and even when it comes to Ghana, what do our children do online? It is also to discuss the risks and the opportunities that we have, and then um, what are some of the strategies that, as parents, we can use to support our children better, to use the technology in a way that will help them to achieve their fullest potential. So globally, one in three children, or uh, one in three internet users are children under the age of 18 years. And I found this um, quote very real. It says, we grew up with the internet. I mean, the internet has always been here with us. But the grown-ups, like some of us, are like, wow, the internet appeared. Well, it is perfectly normal for us. Recently, my children went to spend some holidays with my brother. And we just realized how dependent we are on them to help us navigate certain things on the, on the, I mean, using our devices and then using technology. So indeed, some of us were born before computer. Some of us came along with it. But for some of the children, even from conception to the time, I mean, they grew up, they have known or they have been exposed to the use of the internet. These are a few statistics that we would want to go through when it comes to Ghana. Our population is 
above 30 million, a little over 30 million. However, mobile phone connections are more than even the population because some of us use two or three SIMs, others even use, they have for all the networks. So nearly 40 million people have, have mobile connections. And then the internet users is over 14 million. And then when it comes to active social media users, it's about 6 million. Can we have the next slide? And when it comes to device ownership, over 80% of the population have access to some mobile phones and all the categories of the um, devices that are used, you can see the percentages there. So we are quite very active when it comes to the use of devices, the use of technology. Can we go to the next slide? And then this uh, slide is something that re uh, really surprised me the first time I saw it. When it comes to the global ranking in terms of social media usage, Ghana is, uh, um, when we take the top 10 countries, Ghana is within the top 10 countries that are very active when it comes to social media uses. And then we are what, among the first three African countries within the top 10. So it shows how active we are. We cannot belabor this point. We use technology for a gamut of things. Shopping, learning, streaming, so many other things. And I must acknowledge that this presentation is inspired by the ITU um, guidelines that was recently launched and also other COP sessions run by stakeholders within the space. So don't be surprised if you've seen some of the slides before, but it is very good for us to set the stage for our discussion. In 2017, UNICEF conducted a study on online practices among children in Ghana. Just for us to understand the context, how children use technology, what are their challenges, to inform us on the interventions that we can, I mean, implement to address the challenges that young people are confronted with when it comes to the use of the internet. And that study was conducted across the entire of Ghana, over 2,000 children all over the Denpen regions were interviewed. So it is a very solid um, report. Seven out of 10 of the children that were interviewed indicated that they used the internet to learn, which was very good and very heartwarming, encouraging, because most of our children resort to the internet to facilitate their learning. And recently, when we were hit by COVID-19, it became, it became a very important resource for our children to access education. Four out of 10 of the children that we interviewed indicated that they have seen sexual images while using the internet, and that is quite concerning. And then two out of 10 said they have met someone physically that they met online. So the, I mean, uh, relationship started online, but then some of them will take it up from online environment to the physical space to meet the person, somebody they had never known or met before. And one of our stakeholders actually drew my attention to that. He said, when you go to Accra Mall, you see people standing there. There are people that they have just spoken on phone or met online, and they are trying to meet up. Then you see them talking, oh, me na me shirt a day orange, no. Me shirt trouser black. Oh, me na me shirt t-shirt red, no. It means that in actual fact, our young people take their online relationship to the real world. 
And we are all aware that this can cause some problems for them. We are all aware of this uh, issue about a young boy who met a, a relationship that started on Facebook and then they met. That case was very, a, a classical example of how dangerous these things can become. And then three out of 10 children said they have actually had experiences that bothered them online. So in the course of using the internet or accessing surfing online, they have some experiences that bothered them. It means that they have unpleasant encounters while they were using the internet. Now, the type of risk that children are exposed to can be put into three broad categories. We look at the content the risks of they assessing harmful content is there. The risks of somebody contacting them, an adult pretending to be a child or in several circumstances, contacting somebody that may pose a risk for them is also there. And then the children themselves, their own conduct can also pose a risk because some of them bully their colleagues online. So the risks that children are exposed to can be put into these broad categories as outlined um, in this slide. And this should inform us on how we should engage and support our children to be um, very good citizens when they go online. Now, Let's take some steps back. I think when we talk about technology, in the past, you could only have a few affluent members or neighbors who have television that you will go and then watch Osafodazi in their rooms and all that. This was how best we experienced technology. Those of us who grew up in the 70s, 60s, I think this, were, this was the best, I mean, experience of technology. Uh, it's a couple TV with people crowded watching. But now let's look at the situation. In 2005, when Pope Benedict was being, I mean, initiated, you could see from the audience, it is just one person that has some phone with a camera trying to capture the moment. But fast forward to 2013, look at the hall when Pope Francis was being initiated. You could see that tells us how we are advancing when it comes to technology. Now let's look at the now and the future. This one, I believe the panelists would dove very deep into it. But then we are going to have smart cities, smart hospitals. Today, even you can sit in your room and you can do a lot of things. I was telling one of my colleagues, I never realized we could even work effectively from home until we were hit with COVID. Most of the things that make me drive all the way from Kaswa to cantonments, in the corner of my bedroom with a device, enabled with an inter with a internet. I was able to do so many things, so many things. And this is where we are going to. And so if the world is moving at this pace and we have children to nurture, to also be able to fit into such a world, then you and I have a lot to do. We owe them a lot to equip them to be very active in the future. And so maybe they are, I'm praying that I will live to see such a, a smart um, future where even my kitchen and everything will be programmed that I will just say press, 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 and then my food will be ready, my kitchen will be clean and all that. I believe we will get there one day. So this is the future. But of course, this also poses a lot of burden on us as parents. And the last speaker acknowledged, I mean, most of the, the, all the three speakers acknowledged that 
not all parents are tech savvy. We may not have all the skills. Our children know more than we do. So how, how, how can we support them and equip them in moments like this? It's a, it's a huge burden. But for me, my joy is that we have initiated a conversation. We may not know it all, but then by discussing and learning from each other what works, what doesn't work, we'll be better equipped to play our role as parents. I think what children do online, our research, I mean, uh, um, discovered that they visit virtual worlds, they play games, they text, they do all, they post videos, they download music, they do research, they learn. These are all the things that our children do online. But inherent in these activities are the risks because children are very curious. You see them going off. Even when they were assessing the, their lessons during the COVID, I mean, through the, um, the, they were having the virtual lessons. Sometimes they are in class, but you see them going to other sites to watch video or cartoons, or they get distracted a lot. That is why they need our support to survive in moments like this. These are some of the popular platforms or apps that they use, they assess. Facebook came up on top, WhatsApp, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. The thing is that you as a parent may not be using all these apps, but it would be good for you to familiarize yourself with these apps so that you can support them. So the, the moment has come. We cannot hide behind, eh, I was born before computer. Yes, we were born before computer, but your parenting children born with computer. So we need to really up our game. We cannot apply the 18th or 19th century skills. It will not work because our children are smarter, and so we also need to be smarter to be able to support them to, I mean, um, grow up to achieve their full potential. I mean, back in those days, you see children looking for meaning of words in dictionary. Today, on a click of a button, they would find the word, and not just text, it comes with pictures and videos. So imagine them typing a certain word, like sex. I mean, you can imagine the wealth of information that they will be bombarded with. And sometimes, this is their feeling, because they were not expecting, I mean, such, I mean, feedback from the, the search they were doing. So yes, it's all part of growing up. But then that is why you and I have a role to play, to be able to even support them in moments like this, when they encounter, I mean, they are, <laughs> are bombarded with information that they were, they were not expecting. So this is some of the things that we can do. As I said earlier, I'm not an expert in when it comes to technology, but even if you are not an expert, you can find support from neighbors, from friends, from colleagues that are better than you are in these areas. At least on Monday when we had the engagement with the telcos, I heard from one partner that even some institutions filter the kind of information their colleagues can assess when they are using their network. I don't know how it will work for individual parents, but that is why we have this space. The experts are here. We will discuss them and they can tell us how these things can be done. But then at the device level, you can also, I mean, block or use certain um, controls to help your child not to assess certain inappropriate content. It is doable. You may not know how to do it. I have on so many occasions, I mean, consulted friends or colleagues who know how to do it, and they've taught me how to do it. So you don't need to know it all. You can always ask 
people to help you to do it so that you'll be able to play your role effectively as a parent. But then, the network, your child will not always use your internet through the service provider you have, I mean, customized in a way that certain information may not be accessible. If the child is using a wi the Wi-Fi or the network from another environment, what you have filtered, your child can get access to it. Even at the device, sometimes they use the devices of their friends. And not all parents may be like you and I who would want to do due diligence and do certain things on the devices of our children. So for me, this is the part that is very key and very important that we should pay more attention to. Let's, at the human level, let's have some dialogue. Let's build the trust. Let's engage with our children. Then when we are in their world, even when they do what they are not supposed to do, they will come back and confess to you. Mommy, when you were not there, let me confess. I did this and this and that. And then you use it as an opportunity to, I mean, and, and tell the child what to do and what not to do, and even boost their confidence not to do that again. But then if you go like you've, put all the necessary things in place, as one of the earlier speakers said, they will outwit you because they are smarter. Sometimes they even support me to get certain things done. So if I want to outsmart them, it will not work. So let's build that kind of relationship with our children. Next slide, please. So let's have a, converse, a conversation with them. Be open and be direct. Some, some, for, for some of us, some topics are like, Hash topics, you don't talk about it. The time of covering things is past. If you don't tell them, they will learn. Uncle Google will tell them, or their friends will tell them. So it's better to be open with your children and talk about all subjects. Be, be ready to talk about all topics, all subjects. If they ask you the question and at that moment you are not ready, be honest and tell them, OK, let me reflect on it. And, and we'll have another time to discuss it. Then you go and equip yourself. You call the Auntie Florence, you call Madame Laratus, and then they'll say, I have this issue. How should I deal with you? And then they would support you to get the, um, the necessary bullet to arm yourself to go and face your child. I do that a number of times. I remember the first time my daughter, she was about four or five years. They were having this Christmas play and I think she was playing the role of Mary. So they said she was Virgin Mary. So she asked me, Mommy, who is a virgin? What is a virgin? I mean, I was not ready for that conversation. So you, I, I was jittery. I said, oh, we'll talk about it. I called another colleague who have teenagers who is more experienced and said, hey, my daughter was asking me this question. How, how should I go about it? And she provided me with some, I mean, a pot to go and then come back as a mother and then engage it. So you may not have all the answers, but feel free to ask around, get support, and do what you are supposed to do. So educate yourself. Find space, explore, ask the questions, and get some basic, I mean, information, facts to enable you to play your role as a parent. The parental controls, we've talked about them, if you don't know how to use them. Ask, seek support, and you get it. Then it is important that you set some ground rules and apply them. Even in the offline environment, when your child is going out, your teenager is, is your teenager is going out. You set some rules. Oh, come back by 7 p.m. Don't say so. Those rules also apply when we go. I mean, we are using the digital space. Let's talk to them. I mean, they cannot stay on their devices 24-7. It is not healthy. So set some rules. And if they, they are broken, use some positive reinforcement to, I mean, get them back online. Yesterday, the young people were telling us, you can seize our phones. Yes, I do it a lot. Sometimes if it is going beyond, I take it. OK, you will not use it for this period. And then they, they are able to comply and then gradually we build that responsible behavior around the use of these things. Friend and follow them. 
but don't stalk. Because if they get the sense that you are stalking them, that is where they will even delete their history. They'll clear it. You will not see it. Oh, it's clear. And you think your child is doing all the right things. But for all you know, they are hiding things from So be open. Let them know you are interested in what they are doing online. Your role is to support them. And once you build that trust, even when they go wayward, they will come back and confess. So let's just try to cultivate that I mean, relationship with our children. And also discuss the implications of posting images online. This is serious because it breaks my heart when I see the young people posting certain things online. Maybe some of them may not know, but let's play our role by telling them the implications of this. I remember last year when um, the team was going around to engage the senior high school students. One of the children asked a question, and that kept me thinking. He said, so what if um, the things that are posted, um, can I, uh, what can I do about them? And then he said, well, we can help you pull it down, but the internet doesn't forget. If somebody already has it, the, the potential of it coming back is great. Then one child also said, then these things that you are telling us at SHS, you should have told us when we were in JHS. It means that we should start the engagement much, much earlier because you could see when you tell them that, oh, there is nothing you can do about those images, you can, then you can see the disappointment in their faces. It means that they have posted things there that they now regret. So let's engage them. Let, the, let them know that the internet doesn't forget. That is how Madame Florence put it. The internet doesn't forget. Once they understand the implications, they'll be more careful. And we parents too. Even the things that we post about our children, the funny things they are doing, would do, do want, would they like people to assess these images in the future when they are vying to be presidents and MPs? So. It has a long-lasting implication, so let's try and engage them, tell them about it. Explore with them, be in their world, sit with them. Oh, what are you browsing? What are you learning? Go through with them. Once they know you are with them, then their confidence about using it positively also gets higher, and then it's, it's possible that they'll do the right things, even if you are not there. What I tell my children is that, well, Mommy will not always be there, but there is a bigger eye that sees you every time, whether I'm there or not. So let's try to build these values in our children. And the last speaker spoke a lot about these things, installing firewall antivirus software on devices. Yes, if we would be um, very prudent to secure our physical, I mean, homes and houses, then the devices where our next I mean, part of our lives are on should also be secure. So we should invest in some of these things so that uh, we can protect. And above all, we should be doing the right things. Children learn by example. So we as parents should be a good role model for our children. If you are always on your phone, your child is talking to you, you are not even looking, doing the eye contact, always texting, responding on your devices. They are learning from you. Even at meal times, daddy has the phone here, mommy has the phone, everybody has the phone, they are sitting in the car, they are not even talking. Please, these things are meant for us to use to make our life better, not to enslave us. So we as parents need to also set um, the right standards for our children to emulate. And so to conclude uh, my presentation, we need to be smart. And this acronym, the S stands for staying safe online but not giving out our personal information. I think Madame Flores emphasized a lot on this. Meeting up with someone you've just met online is just not good enough. Let's, I mean, engage with our children and let them know that meeting somebody, some people even pretend they are young people. You go and then you go and see that you've actually met an old man, somebody who is the age of your grandfather or your father. So 
it is dangerous, it can cause problems, so let's tell our children. And we shouldn't just accept child's um, request. Everybody, every friend request you see on Facebook, accept, 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 accept. People you do not even know. Please, let's educate our children that the fact that somebody is a friend of your friend doesn't mean you should befriend that person because you may not even know that person well enough that you want to be associated with. And then, um, not every information online is reliable. We should let our children know this so that they can always come back to check with an, a, a, a trusted adult or um, with um, somebody who knows better that, or that's a more, uh, somebody who is well informed about that subject, just to be sure that the information is from a, a good source and it is true. And then, yes, sometimes they go where well, the unexpected happens, but then we should let them build the trust of telling an adult. The research that we did, one, one key finding was that we asked the children, so when you, you have an uncomfortable experience, who would you talk to? Majority of them said they would talk to their parents. Two out of 10 said they would talk to their parents or siblings. So it means that parents, our children are not trusting us enough. They trust their, um, their friends more than us. So we should try and cultivate that relationship to enable our children come to us and tell us whatever happens to them, whether offline or online. And these are the um, that we have any issue, we have these points of contact available. Thank you so much for listening to me. God bless you. Let's give you another round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Joy. Um, I work quite closely with her. And she always tell me, sometimes it gets difficult. She go like, my dear, this goes beyond just work. It's service to humanity. So with the passion she exhibited whilst doing her presentation, that's why she attaches to what she's doing. And the faceless nature of what children go through online, the abuse, the exploitation, and the borderless nature of the cyberspace is what makes this very scary, if I should put it that way. And I hope we've imbibed a lot. We'll take a health break for 15 minutes. After that, we'll have a panel discussion to further explore what the options should be. So we'll take a break now for 15 minutes and we'll continue. Thank you very much. <laughs>